Hey everybody, my name is Daquan Johnson and I'm an MD-PhD student. And today's video is going to be quite a long one, but hopefully it'll be informative. And so today's video is based on an email that I received recently um, asking me whether I considered MD only or PhD only, and if so, um, how to decide on MD-PhD. Um, and so I already answered this question personally for the person who sent me the email. But this is a quick plug to remind you to comment, subscribe, and reach out to me if you have any questions because I honestly enjoy interacting with you all and helping you as much as I can. But back to the response, um, I realized after answering the person's questions, I didn't fully answer it all the way because I was only thinking from the perspective of me as an undergraduate student sitting there that summer submitting my AMCAS applications. Um, I didn't talk about or think about the aspects of where the progression of when did I learn about MD, PhD, uh, how I decided on that and what were my thought processes leading up to that. So I think starting much sooner uh, will probably give a more inclusive thought process might be able to relate to some of you. So you can start thinking about some of the personality traits and some of the things that may influence whether or not you need an MD, a PhD or both. So starting from the very beginning, I wasn't one of those people who just knew like right out of the womb that I was going to be a physician. Um, I also had couldn't even fathom being a research scientist because I hadn't met one and I truly didn't understand what they did until late high school. So honestly, when I was young, my initial thought process was, well, maybe I can be a chef. I like to cook, be a basketball player. They make lots of money. Be an entrepreneur. I always wanted to have my lemonade stand, um, different things like that. Um, but medicine never crossed my mind in my early ages. Um, and it didn't really start to dawn on me until really as I was deciding which high school I wanted to attend and what I wanted to get out of high school. And so when I started high school, I firmly remember being set on this one track mind saying that I'm going to go and work hard. I'm going to study hard, get scholarships so I can go to my dream college, get into my dream medical school, become a physician. Um, and that was super important for me because at the time I knew that to become a doctor, you had to go to college and to go to college, you needed money, money in which my family and I did not have. And I wanted to reduce the amount of loans I would get. So I worked my butt off and that was my whole entire motivation for working really hard in high school and it paid off. Um, but that was only my thought process for the first two years or so, because once I hit the middle part of my sophomore year, the accelerated STEM program that I was in offered me an opportunity to go into the research track. I initially resented it and resisted it, saying that I would never want to do that. All I'm good at is life sciences and the thing that people do in life science research labs or work with these disgusting mice. I would never do this, blah, 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 blah. I obviously had no idea of all the things that was encompassed in biomedical research or like biological research at large. Um, but luckily my mom firmly pushed and suggested that I try it. And if I didn't like it, I quit. Um, and ironically, I joined a lab that used mice to study diabetic retinopathy. But despite that, I fell in love with research. I loved how I was learning things that made me shine in the classroom. The ability to learn new things um, just through my experiments, breaking down primary literature over reading one paper over the course of two weeks just to try to get the main um, core idea from it. Um, excited me because no longer was I studying for an exam, was I studying from a textbook, was I doing meaningless practice problems that had no physical relevance. I saw that my work had actual potential, that if this work was published, if this work came to people who actually knew how to wield it, it could change the lives of thousands of people. Um, and so it was super exciting that I had so much power, I had so much independence, and that learning could be so much fun. Um, so for me, at that point, having that experience, it then became, well, I have to add this to my career path. Um, it was never this or that. It was that, well, I said I was going to be a physician, but now I'm going to add on the research part too. So it means when I go to school, I have to get the MD and the PhD, even before I knew the dual degrees existed. So eventually I learned about MD PhD programs and I was able to articulate this in my undergraduate application in terms of what are my goals and my aspirations in life. And so when by being able to do that it gave me an advantage because that means programs that were geared towards getting people like me um, into md phd programs were able to were able to tell me directly if your goal is to get into an md phd program if you put in the work 
We'll provide the guidance and the resources to make sure you're as competitive as possible to get into these dual degree programs. And that was enough to change my mind from my dream school to school that I eventually went to. Um, and so for me, I decided on MD PhD rather early. I decided before I even started college. And so from the time I set foot on my college campus, that's what I was aiming for, aiming for an MD PhD program. And so throughout my college career, I did build my CV and I wound up building out more of the research parts of it. And I guess that was more important, the fact that I, I developed a bias towards the research side of my, my CV and understanding how that would work. So that was um, interesting to say the least, but also kind of leans towards the, the idea that maybe the PhD only would have been sufficient for me. Um, so that leads me up to where I started applying to MD PhD programs the summer before my senior year. And when I applied for MD PhD programs, I only checked the MD PhD box. When I applied for all my programs, I did not ask to be considered for MD only. So if I got rejected from the MD PhD programs, I got rejected from the medical school as well. So, um, so I didn't really consider MD only uh, past high school. In college, I was thinking that while the pros were, I could still do research without a PhD, but being immersed in that space for all of undergrad, seeing how the grant cycles were working, I understood that MDs aren't getting as many grants as they used to. Having a sustained track record, which gets very disrupted throughout the medical training process and very difficult to sustain, um, is difficult. And so therefore getting the ability to buy your time back and have a lab after doing extensive medical training can be difficult. And I knew that research was a non-negotiable. Um, also, the other thing that I really enjoyed that I thought was pretty important was the fact you have access to patients. Um, and for me, I really enjoyed human health, human diseases, and that was the most interesting science to me. And so having access to the patients who are day in, day out, going through those experiences, going through the diseases, you can ask them, how does that feel? How does it make you feel? Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Um, you can ask more questions, you can probe, you can gather more data from a person than you sometimes can get from other models. And so for me, those were all pros, but ultimately which made me decide not to be considered for just MD programs at all in any of my applications the fact that I didn't feel that the debt was worth the payoff in terms of the impact that I wanted to have in the world. Um, I feel that I would have been an academic physician and that being a hospitalist in a hospital, um, given the current constraints and the demands of physicians and how busy they are, I wouldn't be able to impact as many people as I would have desired. Um, given the 15 minutes to work with each of my patients, given the, the, the stress, given the constraints that I would have, I wouldn't be able to impact as many as I wanted to. And for me, that was not an equal trade-off. And also I knew that I wanted to be an endocrinologist. Um, I liked diabetic disorders. <laughs> I liked metabolic disorders. I liked understanding pathways and signaling. Um, and so on a disease scale, your patients are not mortally ill. And so for me, if I became a master of my craft, everything would become very routine and very mundane, very cyclical, very boring. And so for me, that's not what I envision for my future. I envision things where I can always be changing and upgrading and doing new things changing the way how things are done. And for me, that was super important. And then also, I disliked the process of thinking that I would have to go through this training process of just memorizing tons of facts um, that I knew that within the next 10 to 15 years wouldn't be true. Um, so these are just things that I said that if I had to do one degree by itself, the MD by itself was not what I wanted to do. So that kind of took MD only off the table for me personally. So then a PhD only was only if I didn't get into any MD PhD programs. And if I went to like places like Cold Spring Harbor where the PhD is about four years typically, had I decided if I still needed that clinical context, I could have went back to medical school, paid for the four years and still effectively became a physician scientist. Um, many physician scientists, even directors of programs now took that path where they finished their PhD, went and did their medical training and then um, integrated as physician scientists later in their lives. So for me, that's, that was kind of the pull for the PhD, PhD side because my strengths lie to the bench. 
my ability to critically think, my ability to problem solve, my ability to follow my interests wherever the funding took me, um, to train bright minds, to build new collaborations, to change the way that therapeutics are done, were the things that like drove me to get up in the morning, drove me to lab every single day. Those are things that really excited me. And so the PhD only was something that I considered. But again, the thing that nagged me to the very end is the fact that I naturally found human health and diseases the most interesting type of science. And so for me, it was just very silly to try to study those type of diseases in the absence of a human experience. Um, so that's what ultimately brought me to the MD-PhD as well as a few other things. I felt that having an MD-PhD, having a training on both sides allows me to change things from a very administrative and a leadership role. So by being trained in both sides, I get the problem solving skills from the PhD and access to the medical and healthcare world where I can change the things that I don't like. <laughs> um, I feel that um, the ability to communicate and the ability to understand both pathways brings in that power and that respect, that dynamic where you can start seeing a system, working in a system, working in a team so that you can build the best result for the, the environment and for the group of people around you possible. Um, so at the end of the day, I still really wanted that, that medical side, that medical context. And I honestly do still enjoy helping people one person at a time, even though I want to have a bigger, con a bigger impact. But the one person at a time thing still feels really nice. And the real reality is the fact that it was a part of my life for the past 16 years, having family members who are sick on their deathbeds in my home, and then having tons of nurses and doctors and other healthcare professionals in and out checking on these people um, inspired me. It was something that I was very used to. It was something that became a daily part of my life. Um, so for me, that was important, that integration portion, that ability to impact change on a small and a big scale, that ability to understand the minute details as well as the global context. And I think for me, that's what the MD-PhD was for me. And that's what drew me and ultimately keeps me in my program. So my closing remarks is the fact that I think the key to deciding which path is best for you is knowing your personality and asking yourself, can you achieve all your goals with only one training pathway? Yes, it is possible to study Alzheimer's disease or study diabetes or study schizophrenia with only a PhD. Tons of successful scientists do it. Um, yes, it's great. You can have an impact on your patients every day and have a very fulfilling life. Being a physician, day in, day out, working very hard, mastering your craft, mastering your interpersonal skills. That can be what your goals are. But for others, being able to master the ability to help one person at a time and take that experience, internalize it, and then turn it into a great question that can further the treatments that currently exist today, change the standard of care that exists today. Those are for the people I think are thinking more so on the MD-PhD level in terms of, is this the right path for them? Because otherwise, if you don't have that true why, sticking to this process is gonna be very difficult because speaking from experience, both training processes require a completely different skill set, and so therefore takes can be quite frustrating at times and takes a quite a toll if you don't really enjoy it, if you don't really have the long goal in mind, the long term in mind. And so not every program is perfect and you'll need to decide which factors are most important for you, whether or not the medical training because you want to be a great physician um, or whether or not you'll be a surgeon. So that means your medical training will be very intertwined with your research, um, whether or not the science of the university is super important, whether or not the social impact is super important, any of those things. And I will definitely be talking about how to choose the right program for you in a video on the 13th. So if you want to hear about that video, click subscribe, turn on the notification bell. And if you want to know immediately when that video is dropped, but I think I'll stop this video here and I hope this long story time answer was helpful and I will see you in the next video.